Alright, in the previous class we studied the different phases of embryonic development, right? Now, firstly we will focus upon spermatogenesis. So, when we talk about spermatogenesis, what is it? It is just a gametogenic process in which formation of male gamete or sperm or spermatozoa occurs in the gonads, right? Gonads is a structure in which sperm formation occurs. And in males, that gonad is known as testes. So, when we define spermatogenesis, so we say it is a process or we can say it is a gametogenic process, right? Gamete formation process in which Male gametes are formed in the testes, right? And now we see that if male gametes are produced, then they undergo meiosis process. That's why they are haploid in nature, right? So, second thing which comes to our mind is gonads and gonad is testes here, right? So, we say testes. So, what is testes? It is just a gonad structure in which male gametes are formed. Or we can say it is a part of the male reproductive system, right? So, firstly, where they are located? They are just located below the abdomen portion. Right? And in some organisms, they are located just right nearby abdomen regions. Right? Or in humans, below the abdomen region. That is, we can say extra abdominal portion. Their location is extra abdomen. Why they are located or why they are descended down is there is a reason behind that, right? So, because at low temperature, male gametes can be produced very easily and their formation process does not hinder there, right? So, that's why they are descended down and they are called as Scrotum or scrotal cells. Okay, they are present there. Their covering is known as scrotum or scrotal cells and they are decided. Now, secondly, we are saying that they are located extra abdominal, but what is the structure? Right? Structure is the main basis. So, how the testes structure looks like? is what we are going to see here. So, whenever we talk about the structure of testes, we are talking about the TS, right? Transverse section of testes. Alright? Somewhat, this type of structure is visible to us. And this is what we call as testes. Alright. So, when we make the diagram, we see some different things here. Right? 
this type of structures are visible right so we observe these structures here this is a case of testes we found now we can mark these structures so firstly we will talk about the outer covering of the testes so the outer covering is known as outer peritoneum and just below this peritoneum layer lies tunica and bugenia right there are two layers first is outer peritoneum layer surrounding the testes and just below this outer peritoneum lies the tunica albuginea layer then we can say that in the testes region there are several tubules like structure present there which are known as seminal vesicles right they are known as seminal vesicles and in these seminal vesicle structures two different type of structures are present right so when we say seminal vesicles then these seminal vesicles are surrounded by a layer called as tunica propria right and under this tunica propria layer lies germinal epithelium right and from this germinal epithelium layer only what are formed are germ cells or our male gametes are formed right so we are much clear that outer layer is peritoneum just below this tunica albuginea about testes and when we are talking about seminal vesicles so these are seminal vesicle structures and it is a outer covering called as tunica propria and under this lies germinal epithelium which contains germ cells we can say so these contains germ cells all right so we will mark here this is seminal vesicle in the seminal vesicle certoli cells are present right and when we talk about these structures so they are spermatogonia right then they are primary spermatocyte then they are secondary spermatocyte then there are spermatid and there are present spermato so so in this way structures are present and when we see in between the seminal vesicles there lies interstitial cells right there lies interstitial cells so these interstitial cells contain some cells yeah we can say these interstitial 
facial cells are also called as Leydig cells. Right, and this whole portion is known as interstitium. All right, this is interstitium portion which contains interstitial cells or Leydig cells, and in this interstitium there are blood capillaries, blood vessels. Plus nervous tissues plus connective tissues. All these are present in this interstitial part. And the cells containing these, the cells which are present in them is called as Leydig cell. Right? We are very much clear in this thing. All right. So we are talking about seminal vesicles and seminal vesicle structures has. Sertoli cells, right? They also has germ cells. So germ cells will form. We can say germ cells will form male gametes or sperms. And what about Sertoli cells? Because the mature male gametes or mature sperms. Embedded their head in these Sertoli cells. So we can say they provide nutrition to them. Right? Their whole work is to provide nutrition. That's why their head is embedded inside them. Make sure sperms take nutrition from this part. Alright? And we have Leydig cells as well. So Leydig cells function is to secrete hormone. Which is called as testosterone. Right? So, two functions we have. First, Sertoli cells is for nutrition, and Leydig cells is for secretion of hormone called as testosterone. So, this is clear by diagram that how different things are present here. One important thing what we see here is also under consideration we can say so here we see that androgens and testosterones are secreted right so this what the male hormones actually do is their function is their work is to control accessory reproductive organs or to help in the formation of accessory reproductive organs. Their second function is to produce secondary characters sexual characters, the changes which occur after adolescence or at the start of adolescence age. Right? So they control these two functions as well. So their control is under which thing? Their control is under, we can say ICSH or LH. Right? What is ICSH? Interstitial cell stimulating hormone. Alright? And what is LH? Luteinizing hormone. So both these hormones combine together to help or to secrete androgens and testosterone in the males. So both these are combined together. And who, yeah, we can say what is responsible behind their secretion is the anterior pituitary gland, which we call it as master gland, right? So anterior pituitary part is responsible for their secretion. Secondly, firstly we talk about this. Secondly, we will talk about the formation of the male gamut. Right. So male gamete 
formation is also under the control of the hormone and that hormone is called as FSH which we call as follicle stimulating hormone. Alright, and this is also secreted or regulated by anterior pituitary part. Alright, so we can say these hormones regulate the activity of spermatogenesis. Alright, now as a result of spermatogenesis, what is formed? Male gamete or sperm is formed. So, we will focus on the structure of male gamete or we can say sperm. So, talk about the structure of sperm. Or male gamete. Firstly, we can draw the diagram and then we will discuss. Right?
angiosperm. Now we can mark the regions. That is, this is a chromosome part. All right. This is nucleus part. This is we can say. proximal centriole part this is we can say here distal centriole part these are mitochondria this is ring centriole right so these parts are present when we collectively call this region so this region is called as head region when we collectively call this region it is called as middle piece region and sometimes this region is called as neck region and we collectively call this region as the tail region so this is particular area so we divide it into three parts first part is the head region when we say that head region is the smallest part and we can say it is 1/12 size of the whole male gamete or of the whole sperm we can say right now when we talk about head region it comprises of two regions that is number one we say about a chromosome part and number two we say about nucleus part right when we talk about the chromosome part what is a chromosome a chromosome is actually the top structure or the top most region of this sperm which contains sperm lysis right which contains sperm lysis or we can say different enzymes these enzymes are only responsible for what these enzymes are responsible for the egg development right or we can say for the embryo formation help in the fertilization process so there is much role of a chromosome region so we can say it is just a cap like structure present just above at the top of the male gamete containing lysins or enzymes responsible for fertilization process so their role is or they help in fertilization right because when this part breaks it releases hormones or enzymes right now when we talk about the enzymes what enzymes it contains so we will say exosome in exosin hyaluronidase acid hydrolase and acid phosphate so these five type of enzymes are present in the exosome part okay which have different functions exosome in exosome hyaluronidase acid hydrolase acid phosphate secondly when we talk about exosome so we talk about that how it is formed so it is formed by the golgi apparatus or we can say golgi bodies okay they have to the formation of exosome region all right now secondly when we talk about the nucleus part so nucleus part is the part just present below the exosome part and in this nucleus part chromosomes chromosomes are present and chromosomes from which side paternal side so we can say paternal chromosomes are present which goes on from one generation to 
next generation right father chromosomes chromosomes for father side are present here and they are haploid right because they have undergone meiosis process secondly these chromosomes contains the characters of the paternal genes or we can say father genes so nucleus is present just below this region uh, secondly when we talk about nucleus region below the nucleus region a region is present a depression region we can say it right there is a depression that means neck portion is present so a depressive region is present which is called as the perforatum perforatum region in this depression region or depression part centriole is present right and which centriole is present here is the proximal centriole proximal means upper part or just near by part when we talk about distal it is a part or we can say by distance it is present so proximal part is near by part near by centriole just present below the nucleus in the depression portion called as perforate so we can say proximal centriole is present now when we talk about this that we also talk about this that what is the role of proximal centriole right there are three types of centriole present every centriole has a specific role there so when we talk about proximal centriole its role is that when fertilization process occurs it enters eggs it enters the ova or egg and activates cleavage there right so it helps in the cleavage or development of the egg to the embryo so we are very much clear in our minds that head region is present right it is comprised of two regions acrosome and nucleus acrosome contains enzymes these Golgi bodies help in the formation of acrosomes and it helps in fertilization process. Second, nucleus chromosomes from paternal sides are present. Haploid number of chromosomes and just below the nucleus, proximal centriole is present. Now, when we talk about the second part, that is the we can say first part was head, second is middle piece, and third is so now middle piece part firstly middle piece part is the part present just below the head region and above the tail at the start at just the start of the middle piece we have one centriole structure called as distal centriole right which is present at some distance that's why it is called as distal centriole so what is the function of distal centriole it helps in the formation of in the formation of axial filament or we can say from this region axial filament starts forming right we are saying this is the axial filament region which is extended till the tail region tail part right so this is formed and this is the axis of the gamete right and here only basal granules are also formed so this is very much clear a uh, second thing which we notice in the middle region part is the mitochondria in mammals the mitochondria are arranged spirally or helical motion right so we talk about here mitochondria
right when we talk about mammals mitochondria are spirally arranged here right in a helical region they are they come together to this region and arranged helical but in other animals other animals mitochondria is arranged as lobes right it is arranged as lobes and this structure of mitochondria is called as nevenka right this structure is called as nevenka thirdly when we talk about the region that is manshade right so this region is just present around the middle piece and what is manshade now thin layer of cytoplasm right so these two things are much more important what is never curd and what is manshade so never curd is a structure of mitochondria it present in other animals right other than mammals and in this mitochondria are arranged as lobes right or in lobes like structure so this structure is known as nabanker structure and what is manshade that means the middle portion or the middle part of the male gamete contains a thin layer of the cytoplasm around it or around the nabanker arrangement and this is known as manshade so we are very much clear that what these two structures are here and what they do some part of the main sheet is present here also near the neck region and near the lower part of the head region but mainly the main sheet region is present in the middle piece portion so we are clear it contains axial filament basal granules and distal centrio secondly we can say it contains mitochondria arrangement and mitochondria helps in providing energy atp so that sperms of male gametes can swim easily or can move easily because we can say they are the most active so they are active due to presence of atp or mitochondria all right mitochondria produces atp now one more structure is present just at the last of the middle piece region which is called as ring centrio right now ring centrio has no as such function but we say that it marks the boundary between the middle piece and the tail so we can say it differentiates middle piece region and tail region so it has a differentiation where the ring centrio will be present we can say it is the end portion of the middle piece so it is arranged like this now we will talk about the last part that is the tail region right and last part is tail region right tail region contains axial filament plus axial sheath right it contains axial sheath around it but this axial sheath is absent in humans right humans does not contain this sheath otherwise most of the organisms have this sheath secondly the arrangement of the tail axial filament is 9 plus 2 just like the cilia or flagella like arrangement right that means nine peripheral centrioles and two central centrioles so in that way 9 plus 2 arrangement is seen in these tail axial filaments as well just like we can say cilia or flagella so structure is just like that then we say it has we can say ring centrioles are present which 
marks the start of the tail region and it has ring like structures present on the whole tail region we see this these ring like structures are present on the whole tail region so tail region is like this so we can say it is helpful for locomotion or we can say movement right it helps in locomotion this tail region helps in active swimming or active movement of the male yeah so in this way this is divided into three parts and they have their specific structures present there right now what we say is the whole sperm or the whole male yani is covered with a membrane called as plasma lemma that means plasma lemma is the surrounding layer right and whole sperm or whole male yani is covered by this layer Okay, secondly, we see that the sperm structure is very much species specific, right? That means every species has different structure of male gamete or different structure of the acrosome region. So here we can see some examples where how the sperm structures are present. We can say that they are species specific, right? Just by diagrams. So, when we talk about the sea urchin, so this is the structure of the sea urchin sperm or male gamete. Second, when we talk about amphioxus. This is the structure of the amphioxus, male gamete, right? Just flower-like structure. When we talk about Toadfin, then this type of structure is present there, right? And lastly, when we talk about nasa nasa, so its structure is somewhat different. So this is structure of NASA NASA. So these we can say or we can see they are very much species specific. Every organism has a different structure and different structure specifies how they are species specific. Right? Now when we see the acrosome structure, so we have given different acrosome structures as well for different organisms. This structure of this region is also species specific in many of the organisms. So when we talk about the reptiles and amphibians, we see a very different structure present there. Right? This is structure present in reptiles and amphibians. This is a chromosome part. Then when we talk about birds, birds have also different structures present there. 
the nucleus present there in birds, right? And this kind of structure is present. Yeah. 